May 5th, 2005, I lost the father of my kids and he was murdered. My name is Ina. Nathan. I'm Nathan. Okay, uh, Javon. <laughs> uh, right now we're standing in a courtyard. We call that the back store. Um, that's the daycare. Anyone that grew up in this area went to that daycare. If not, then there was one of the houses up by the community center and that was the home daycare for everyone. Um, to anyone that you speak to that grew up in this area, they would say that it's home, regardless of you know the prostitution, the drugs, the alcoholism, and the whole miseducation aspect of you know the hood. Um, yeah, it's home to us. This is where I grew up. I left when I was 13. And I'm now going to be 39, and I still call it home. As you seen before, you started the camera. Someone walked by. And, hey, you know. So yeah, it's still home for me. I guess for myself, balancing the different feelings that I had, um, was being a single mother in general, the guilt around maybe not feeling that I should have supported certain things differently. Uh, I think the hardest thing to get past was um, the fact that um, my dad was dead, and that like I couldn't I couldn't get him back. And I recently, probably like two years ago, got got over it because. I started to tell myself that um, you can't change things that have already happened. For you. Well, <laughs> um, I think the hardest part about um, the death of my dad was growing up without that main father figure to teach you how to do the things that a mother can't teach you how to do because a mother can only teach you so much and how to be a man. but. Sometimes the pain and the loss helps uh, give you structure on what to do to become a man. Yeah, um, and I tell them too, when, when they go out, I kind of show them because I know what the game looks like, right? You know, stand up against the wall, you guys make sure that you're together, you know, know where your exits are. I'm always worried about them, you know? Yeah. So is this something that you guys ever get tired of hearing or is it something that you fully understand? Mm, yeah, we, fully understand. we fully get it. Yeah. I don't think we can be tired of hearing it. If we were tired of hearing it, we wouldn't know how to navigate through the city. You know what I mean? Uh, sometimes when it hurts a bit more is when, I, is when I hear some of my friends talking about stuff that they did with their dad mm -hmm. or giving e e examples about their dad. I feel like... Um, um, you could have had that. I feel like... I feel, feel a bit... Um, and don't know. I don't want to say angry because I don't really get angry anymore because I got past that stage. But um, it makes it makes it makes me feel like a bit sad. So it makes it makes it makes me feel certain ways. Yeah. yeah, closer to and I, I don't want to like pinpoint like okay Father's Day or Mother's Day or Christmas um, stuff stuff that I like if I can't handle certain things that are going on with them, I'm like I wish I had someone here to help me out. You know what I mean? It's moments of, of being alone and by myself where I'm like, I could do that. I can do with that extra hand. Yeah. These guys. Every day. Yeah, I'm reminded of them, of him every day when I, when I have these guys. Like facial features, you know, mannerisms, tempers, just the little silly things that they'll do. So there's always, there's, there's good things too, right? So, yeah. Is there anything one thing that you can give a, a clear example of that? Maybe they may say something, and maybe they quote, well, like, that's exactly what he used to say, exactly what he used to do. Um, so, there's this thing that, that he would do, like this big smile, like when he would get excited or do something silly, they actually have that silly smile, right? Or when he's about to eat, or when he would be about to eat, he would do something with his hands, and they, yeah, yeah, right? So, they, they both kind of do that, or the, yeah, see? So, it's... So it's those good things that I see, yeah. Um, the, way, the way I felt about losing my father when I was five was, was more confused than anything because um, I didn't know how to, how to feel about having lost, lost my dad. I also, I also had a lot of anger and I was, I was a mad kid who wanted to fight people all the, all the, all the time because of how I was feeling. Mm -hmm. And um, 
it's uh, even even three years three years, three years ago I was think I was, I was feeling different I was feeling like um was feeling um depressed at the fact that um there's no father in my life and um that that like, that that brought me anger and I was I was I was doing things in my life that I felt that I shouldn't because I was feeling ways about that time but now I feel I feel um like I don't feel sad at, at, at all about it. I feel actually com actually I feel completed because I um cuz I got around to the fact that you can't change any, change anything that has happened and that having happened to me brought me traits that no one else could feel. Mm -hmm. So, I feel kind of empowered by it because I have cuz I have certain unique experiences and um different ways of thinking about things. Anything for you? Yeah. So he was he was five when it happened, and he just turned two a month before. So he had a little bit of memories with him. He had zero. So I think, like for myself, trying to show him that, as much as he says that he misses him, or misses the fact that he has a father or, or didn't have one, um, the hard part for me is trying to show them, like, you can't miss what you didn't have or didn't know what you had. So I think the biggest part for me, how old was I, 25, 2005, yeah. Um, so yeah, just when, when I first heard about it, I didn't believe it, but I knew that it would, the time would come because of the lifestyle that he lived. So prior to his, his murder, he was um, Canada's most wanted, went to jail for two years, went to trial, and then was acquitted. Um, you know, and I'm going to say, according to the newspaper, the head witness changed her story, and you know, and I think the retaliation aspect of that lifestyle caught up to him. Right, so it's almost like you learn to accept that lifestyle, and I don't want to say the death, like accepting the death, made it easier, but it also opened your eyes that it could happen. You're either going to do life in jail or you're going to do life in the ground. You know, so it's the scales, right? Certain things get easier because you accept their certain things, but the feeling of loss always remains the same. But the way that I, I feel my loss in the void is through through myself and through the boys. Yeah, like I, don't, I, yeah. I don't I don't think it gets easier either. Mm -hmm. I just I just think that you have you have different ways of thinking about the situation. So it broadens your mind and opens up way of thinking but it never like I don't I don't think it gets easier um, I guess because he was a high profile person you know being Canada's most wanted um, being a suspect in five other murders you know the fear of will those people retaliate against me or the boys you know having my face out there having their face out there um, it's a risk right so then I kind of said, okay, let me just tell my story in bits and pieces and not give too much information, but just give enough to set a platform to let everyone know that their voice should be heard as well. But I think it's hard like just just talking about it in general because when you when you talk about it it'll just bring back memories and just just thinking about the death. So um well, one like one like one reason it's hard is because of that, and another one is because, like I don't, because I don't really want to share this story with just anyone. You have to be close to me, because mm -hmm. um, I don't like a lot of people to know my business. Also, like I feel like I feel kind of weird telling random people about my story if I don't feel like they should know about it. Mm -hmm. Also, like the embarrassment factor of. You know, someone for myself, someone that I had children with, was accused of killing people. You know, that part too is, I think, the embarrassment part. And then it's like, you know, what these guys are gonna feel when they're older, right? Um, someone pulled a gun on me and the kids. Yeah. So he was about. I don't know, he was maybe, like one. No, he was still in the in the snuggly. So he was a couple months old and. He was just about three, and we were in front of the Don jail, and two guys pulled a gun on us. 
So I'm thinking maybe they, they knew that, you know, we were there to see him and that was what it was. So, and I think that, that was like, okay, I'll never tell this story ever again. I don't want anyone knowing that, you know, who he is. You know, I moved from one end of the city to the next, so, you know, just uprooted myself. So, yeah, I think about it all the time. Of course it can happen. It can happen to anybody, you know? Yeah, I think, like, um, having having our background, like, father who was, like, a gangster, did what he did, he was in the streets, like, it gives us kind of, like, a quote-unquote right to be in the streets like that, so we feel like... Um, Hood royalty is what we call it. Kind of, and like you feel like yeah. you feel like you would be allowed to do that because of of like because of my father. So yeah, there like there was a time where I felt like I could be doing that, but then I looked at the bigger picture and told myself that that wasn't that wasn't the way. And every day living in Toronto, like I feel like a little bit a little bit paranoid, but I try to I try to take that away from my head. So, so when I first started coming here, yeah, it was good vibes, even though, you know, it is the hood and, and you always have to be watching over your shoulder. You don't really think about that when you're here. It's just like a big family. Yeah, there's always like that little voice in the back of your head that's saying, if nothing's going right for you, then, you know, you have kind of a free pass to be in the streets. and. I'm not gonna lie, I thought about it a couple of times after some situations happened, like involving me getting a gun pulled on me, and I was just like, I don't want to have that feeling of me not being, like I can't uh, protect myself if someone pulls out something on me. But like my brother said, I was looking at the bigger picture and that lifestyle, the money doesn't last and everything that you gain from that lifestyle doesn't last and I didn't really see a point in indulging in all of it. Well I'm a I'm an athlete type of guy and I'm trying to either make a living in music or sports and I can't be traveling and doing what I want to do if I have a record with gun possession or anything in that area. Anything else? Also yeah. also the way I the way I feel about that like getting a gun for your pr protection reason because I've, I've I've thought about it too but the reasons that that pulled me away from it is because it's it's illegal in this country having having the records not good and also because I feel like if if you have that gun on you you're attracting you're attracting that that kind of energy so I'm having the gun on me for a reason to protect myself, but I'm like I still have in the back of my head like if someone comes up to me and tries to do something bad, I'll shoot them. So I'm gonna bring that energy around me because that's what I'm thinking in my head. So mm -hmm. that's what I thought. Yeah, I think it's also like the weapon in general, whether it's a gun, a rock, a, a knife. It's the false power, right? False protection. Because the night that he was shot, he had a gun, so it didn't protect him, right? So. Um, well, right now I'm part of a movement, um, a little bit of my own too, it's, um, it's called May, Mama and Her Youths. So basically it's like, you know, supporting single moms and their children kind of, you know, either they've, they went through the similar experiences or, you know, growing up in, in the hood, um, just helping them, inspiring them and, and giving them empowerment, um, you know, yeah, and, and motivation to, to do better for themselves and how to navigate through the system. Um, so when I see these things happening, obviously it's disheartening. Um, how could it, this is, I guess the crazy side of me is like, how can we stop it, right? Can it, can it be stopped? Can we figure out what it, what is it that's having people just go and kill people for, for nothing? Stepping on someone's shoes because they want someone's watch, you know, like, you know, your your rap video is better than mine and you know I just think it's it's all over stupid shit mm -hmm. you know? I feel like when I first started seeing it happen I was kind of shocked but then over like the past couple years it became normal like seeing 
things mm-hmm. on the news like every week, every other day about someone getting killed, it just became normal. We're kind of desensitized to it, right? It's it's, it's our kind of war. You know, when, you, when you hear people coming from other countries that are that have war, we kind of have similar PTSD as they do, right? The fears, the anxieties, the you know, the misconceptions of reality. Yeah. Now we're catching it on video or seeing people with their their brains out on the sidewalk. You know? Yeah. And so like, yeah. when I when I see that kind of stuff on the news, like what well, like what my brother said, it's been normalized so you don't really think too much about it, you just think, Oh, another another one happened but mm-hmm. I think I think it's gotten out of out of control and like people people need to start people, like, people need to start thinking more about about their decisions mm-hmm. um, it's being real with yourself being real with your feelings allow yourself to feel everything whether you feel guilty you feel mad sad happy and tell your kids everything the whole story you know from how you seen it how you lived it you know don't sugarcoat anything because if they go on the street and someone tells them about, for example, if someone told them about their father and I didn't tell them, you know, I would feel like, I'd feel like shit that I didn't let them know. Like, yeah, you know, your dad was this kind of person. But at home, obviously he loved you as a, as a child, you know. So, yeah, just being real with yourself, allowing yourself to feel everything. So for the next person who's thinking about buying a gun or, like, picking up a knife or for protection or because they want to go hurt somebody I will just say um, like if you if you want it for protection and um, and you'll feel more safe doing it I think a better idea is to just stay in your house as much as you can <laughs> unless you really need to do something don't go don't go chilling with friends if you don't have to like put your put yourself in situations where you where you where you don't think that you'll have to worry about being like being being harmed. Also, also don't um don't do don't do bad things to people because if if you do that bad like bad bad things are gonna happen to you. Mm-hmm. So just so just live your live your own life and don't worry about what the next person is thinking in their in their head. Mm-hmm. So. Obviously, if you have your mindset on getting getting a weapon, whether it's for protection or harming someone, and me sitting here telling you not to is most likely not going to register in someone's head that is, that's mindset is like that. But just think to yourself, is it really worth me risking my life for either jail or the other person that I'm basically gonna go harm getting revenge on me is it worth all the consequences that it has Mm -hmm. does it weigh out and if it doesn't weigh out then there's no point even if it does the odds are always stacked against you Mm -hmm. for myself um, I guess the last little bit of thing and maybe it's gonna be a rare thing that you'll hear for me it was bittersweet um, and when I say that, he wasn't going to change, right? Um, so he wasn't going to change the stuff that was happening to us. It's like it could have been him or us, right? So it's almost like his death was our life to allow us to kind of live free in the freedom that we had after he passed. You know, and I think, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was I was, I was gonna talk to some uh, some of the people who are want are wanting to go get revenge for like a family member that has gotten shot or killed or one of your friends. I'd like to say to you that going and killing that person or harming the next person that you want to harm won't bring your won't bring your friend friend back and it won't make situations better and it won't change the way that you're feeling because. Your friend or your family member is still gonna be dead after you go harm, if you if you go harm that person. Just like, mm-hmm. And if you're thinking that in your head, think about you're going to harm this person. Think of that as like 
as as you as your brother one of your friends that you're really close to just think about how that's gonna make their family feel and like think like think think about their life situation and think about if that if that was you mm -hmm. so just uh just put just put put more thought into your life you're worth more than uh going and causing causing havoc because violence back in the day there was always a code you know um little kids weren't getting shot you know if there was beef between two adults it was handled between those two adults mm -hmm. um the kids weren't afraid to be outside you know there obviously there was always gunshots there was always cops running through but there's always that safety aspect of everyone knows everyone so if i was at the top of the walk my mom knew that hey your daughter's up here and she shouldn't be up here you know so everyone was watching out for everyone back in the day and now i feel people aren't looking out for you as much as they were back in the day i think that's the difference yeah there's a there's usually a negative stigma when you you hear the word word hood a lot of people think of violence unruly people like uh like you know just just like bad 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 people in general but in reality when you get when you get comfortable with the people that you're around the the, the community tends to um ten, tends to grow on you there's just just full of laughter and like just this just family like we said although there like there is there's some some violence but usually it's just it's just peace and peace pe peace in here and brother brotherhood Brotherhood and sisterhood, yeah. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, like it's it's kind of it's kind of sad that people talk about people in the projects and in the hood and think about think 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 about the worst. Meanwhile, we're actually like some of the most loving people. Just gotta give us a chance.